Welcome back to the channel everyone. In this episode of the Barra T4580 build, we're going to be making a folded aluminium shroud for the radiator. I've had some very limited experience making folded aluminium parts before, so come on this learning journey with me and hopefully we can make something that's worthy for the car. Something I forgot to mention is that we'll also be bolting in the drive shafts. This episode, we'll do that as soon as we finish making the shroud. Down here at Lawrence's factory today, he's helping me out with the shroud. How are you, mate? Good, buddy. <laughs> very kindly agreed to let me use this folder so I've got my thermofan and my radiator and I've got to make a shroud so I'm gonna use Lawrence's new folder for that I've got a bit of an idea um, of the design I'm going for I haven't really used one for a while so I'm just gonna muck around with a bit of a test piece and figure figure out how much material is sort of required to fold um, I'm gonna make it out of three mil aluminium and just have a have a quick look this is his rig here so yeah pretty serious pretty serious thing so I guess yeah on, on the part design I guess I'd like to bolt it on the side so one or two bolts here and then for it to come up here and sort of I think it's really important to have a shroud so as much air as possible gets sucked through the fins ultimately heat transfer is a function of area and this will really help the effectiveness of the radiator Especially at slow speed applications where it's relying on the fan to suck air through the fins and dissipate the heat via convection. So yeah, come with me on the journey on, uh, on making this radiator shroud. Did a couple of bend radiuses on just a test piece just to figure out how the folder worked in my head. And then drew up my final dimensions and now we're ready to make the part. So Lawrence has a plasma cutter and that's what we use to get this so square. Um, it's so easy just to run a metal rule down it and then run the plasma along that. If I had used an angle grinder, I would not have it this square. So I just got to cut out my little corners and then we're good to use the folder. All right, first time using the folder, just taking the little corners out with an angle grinder. So the plan is to go up and then back like that. So I'm gonna have to take this thing off the folder to do the, the second fold. Um, yeah, wish me luck. I really don't know what I'm doing here. Alrighty, so I made a little mistake when I was making my first shroud. Basically, I folded this edge up first, and then I couldn't get there's a there's a 15 mil limit of how deep you can fold to fold in the other direction for this flap, and I didn't realise, and I need that extra eight mil, so I should have folded this part first before I, I uh, folded that. So then I would get an extra eight mil there. Um, so I had to start again, but that's alright, I'll use this alley for something else. And then we're on to version 2 now, so we're all done. And I'm really happy with the result. So I'm going to put a fan, obviously, on the top. Just marked out the centre, and I think we're going to use a plasma cutter and a string. Um, I really hope that fan's in the right position. I did do some measurements off the car. Um, I've got to cut these tabs off. And then it'll sit right down and I've got to weld some weld some tabs on so it'll fix to the radiator properly. But that's that's alright, that's easy stuff. So sort of past the hard part now. Let's cut this hole out and uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. Shroud down, still got to make the mounting points under here and then drill some holes. But that's the easy part, the hard part's all done. So I'll get it home and get it on the car. Just cutting off the existing radiator mounts, there are a heap of little tabs down the side. You can see there, there and there and there. And they basically weren't letting my shroud sort of sit down as far as it could. And I want as good a seal as I can. Alrighty, so I just finished chopping out those mounts and I put the shroud on in its final place for the first time and I'm bloody wrapped with the seal. 
let's just um, have a closer look. So across the top edges, there's maybe like a millimeter. And then on the side, it sort of wraps around the steel casing of the radiator. So there's actually no gap between it. And then at the ends here, there's a couple of mil. Um, let's just see if we can focus. But yeah, I mean, overall, like that's really, really good. And then I guess the next step to get it perfectly sealed would be to use some rubber or tape or something. If anyone's got any tips, let me know. I, um, I've never done this before, but yeah, I know the, the better the seal, the better the cooling. So yeah, I'm bloody wrapped. I guess um, next step, obviously put these tabs back on. About to weld on the tabs in a position that I'm happy with. Just a little aside, when I try and do this stuff, I try and do it so you can only assemble it one way. So you'll notice here, the tabs do appear to be in the same position, but this one's got two nuts on it. So when I'm assembling it in six months time and I've forgotten that the fan is not actually in the center of the radiator, it is offset to one side due to the pulleys, then I'll only be able to assemble it one way. I try and do this with everything that I'm making or designing. It's not groundbreaking technology or anything, but it's just the way that I do it. I believe the technical term is called pokey oak, but yeah, only able to assemble in one way so anyone could assemble it. Got to use a die grinder on here to clean up the holes a little bit and I've also got to take off the excess material. Um, you can sort of see that I don't need a whole lot of this. <laughs> Alrighty, preliminary test fit and I'm bloody wrapped. So there's probably like 10 mil in there between the fan and one of the pulleys. Um, it's clashing on this though, so as soon as I cut that, I'll be able to move it another 10 to 20 mil forward. So I'll probably have 30 mil all up, but how good does that look? So it's just an uh, underappreciated part, but once I clean up these flaps, it'll look really nice. Cutting off the excess bits for the shroud, so these bits will fit my tabs perfectly. Uh, a little amateur tip for you, I've been putting WD-40 on the angle grinding disc, which, which seems to stop it from clogging up as much. So I'll just finish that off now and then put it back on the car. Alrighty, moment of truth for the radiator and fan. Have a look at that clearance. We are chilling. Um, yeah, I'm super glad that I persisted with the front mount intercooler and I didn't swap to top mount or rear mount radiator or anything like that. Um, it works, it is possible. Yeah, moment of truth, stoked. Now we finished the shroud, let's have a look at my custom drive shafts. Just got my drive shafts back from g and drive lines. Front one's way longer than the rear one just because of the transfer case position. I really should have filmed when I measured them, it, there wasn't much to it. I literally just measured the, the flange distance from the transfer case and then onto the diff as well. As I've mentioned in previous episodes, I want my driveline to be reliable. I've had no experience with cutting and shutting drive shafts before, so I'm more than happy to pay for this service as it's a highly loaded rotating component, which is subject to years of fatigue, from, especially from my powerful barra. Just bolted the drive shaft in for the first time and I'm bloody wrapped with the clearance. So I'm so glad that I've mo mounted the motor on an angle because it's given me more clearance here as I've sort of said in previous videos. Have a look at that. So there's probably 10, uh, 15 mil between that lug and the drive shaft. And if I hadn't have mounted the motor on an angle, that would be clashing for sure. And it, it doesn't matter. The drive shaft is just gonna go up and down. Um, I don't think in full bump that it actually moves a whole lot more. I've got to test, got to take the springs out and test full bump. But the only part that it might clash on is um, this part of the casting for the gearbox. 
Uh, but there's, I don't know, maybe like 50, 60, 70 mil, and I'm pretty confident that it won't do that. So I will take the springs out and check it in full bump. But yeah, bloody, bloody wrapped. And the other thing is, I've got a bit of three inch tube here. I was super stressed about where I was gonna run this exhaust, but I'm going to be able to fit it in here. So that's a three inch exhaust and I've got almost, I don't know, 30 to 40, probably 40 mil of clearance uh, between the drive shaft and where the exhaust is going to run. So I am absolutely stoked with that because I thought I was going to have to run it outside the frame rail. Um, I'll show you where I thought I was going to have to run it, which would have been a nightmare and I really didn't want to do. I thought I was going to have to run it under there and then through here and then back over. Um, and I'm so glad that I didn't have to do that. So now it's just such a simple exhaust. I'm just going to run straight down. I'll, I'll go into that in, uh, in the next episode. Back one in as well. Fits like a glove. Super pumped on it. So for the first time, I don't have to run these little wooden chocks under the car. It is now in gear, so it can... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have a handbrake yet, obviously. But it is now in gear and it can stay in one spot by itself. So how good is that? Woo! We're getting, getting further and further along. So I've got these high quality clamps from eBay. They're about 20 bucks each. Dave's helping me out today. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. I'm obviously worried about the drive shaft and the transmission. And then um, I'm also a little bit worried about the bottom of the sump and the axle. So yeah, the idea is obviously take both springs out, drop the car down and just check if anything clashes. So spring out now, we can gently lower the car and then check the clearances. Obviously we have to do it to the other side as well. Show you the result. Okay, so that's the drive line at full, full bump. So there's probably 15, 20 mil between the drive shaft and the uh, the trans. Not sure why, but the clip corrupted on my camera. So here's a photo of the engine and front axle clearance. There's probably around five mil static clearance. Obviously the engine can vibrate a little, so I'm thinking I'll raise the bump stops to compensate for this. I'll do that when I'm doing my suspension and axles in a later episode. That brings us to the end of this episode. I'm really stoked with the results on my shroud. In the next episode, we're gonna go into why I had to high mount the turbo and the custom manifold that I've had to make in the process. So if you want to see more of this build, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and drop us a line in the comments. Cheers.